Hello everyone, all are back. Okay. So let's uh, continue the session. <coughs> I hope the screen is visible to all of you. So we have discussed about prompt engineering. I have showed you a couple of uh, demos in prompt engineering in uh, how to make the prompt very clear and specific and using the system messages and all. Now let's do the lab. In this lab, as the other uh, labs, the first two steps is to create and deploy a model. So we have already this OpenAI resource ready, so we don't need to create and deploy it. Now let's try the Prompt engineering techniques. We can open the Open AI Studio and go to the chat playground section. So we can go to the AI Studio, go to the chat playground section. And now we have to try a couple of things here. We can configure the assistant setup chat session and configuration in the assistant setup we can configure the message as you are an ai assistant that helps people to find information so that's a system message or default system message okay so this is the default system message we can see so no problem just leave this as it is no issues and then we will go to the chat session and put this message there so what kind of article this is and there is some information about the drought in california so this is the prompt so in this prompt, it's just asking what kind of article this is. And below, you can see a section di uh, divider and then giving that text content. Now, when we give this, it is giving <coughs> the answer that this is a news article related to the environment and climate focusing on the current severe drought situation in California. Right, so you can see this <clears throat> is giving a description. Okay, this is a description that this news is all about. Okay, so what is this news all about? It's just giving a description in one line. Okay, but this is not the expected result. So what I have to do is I'm not expecting it to give a one liner description. Instead of that, I want to get the uh, category or type of this article. So what I need to do is I'm just updating the assistant setup to this. That means you are a news aggregator that categorizes the news articles. So I can go back and update this information here and save those changes. As you can see, now we have updated the system message. And below, you can see what is example. And here we can add the examples for that. We'll go back and in the example section, 
we can put this as the user prompt and what is a response it's a sports so i'm just uh, copying this here i'm giving an example what is a user prompt which i am pasting here and assistant is going to say sports because the news article which is here is about a new uh, about the sports that is new york baseballers wins big against chicago and new new york baseballers mounted a big 5-0 shootout something like that so you can see it's a news about sports so we have given the category as sports now one more example we can give that this is the user prompt and this is i think about oscar award night or award winning something like that so this is one more example we are adding here and the type we are giving entertainment so assistant is supposed to say the category of this news is entertainment so through the example i have told that it has to just tell me what type of news it is okay i don't need a description i just need a category name like a sports entertainment and so on now we can save the changes in the assistant setup here we have the save changes or apply changes we can save it now you can see these examples are there we'll go back and put this in the chat session that means the same message that is severe drought likely in california same news we are going to put in the chat section so i'll just clear this chat and put this look at that previously what we got the result is one line description about this news now let's see what is the result coming it's just giving a one word answer that is this news is all about environment right so that is a benefit of setting examples because now we are setting the behavior of this assistant that is it is go going to be a news aggregator that categorizes the news articles and also we are giving some examples that shows how to categorize the news and how to give the answer so previously it was giving an one liner answer but now it is just a one word that tells in which category this news goes right now we can change the assistant setup and uh, uh, set to the default template message so we are done with it so i'm just clearing this and also i'm just uh, deleting this examples and changing this to default to template okay so you can see i have set this to default template message so it's now we can say it's reset and here in the chat session i'm just going to give this three lines that is first one create a list of animals second create a list of whimsical names for those animals third combine the, them randomly into a list of 25 uh, and name pairs 24 animal and name pairs so I, that this i'm just copying and putting this here so you can see sorry right so you can these are the instructions i have and this time i'm just uh, saying that you are a virtual assistant that is helping the people <laughs> now what happens when i give this prompt it's just giving giving a list of animals a list of whimsical names and another list of the combination that is the animal and the name pair combination is created and you can see right so it's a very simple answer but the expectation is not that 
the expectation is that we have to create a python code that creates a list of animals and then another list of whimsical names and then using program we are going to combine this randomly and generating 25 names as a pair okay so we have to do this programmatically so i'm just changing the system message from <clears throat> the default message to you are a coding assistant that helping write python code so see what happens when i change the behavior i have updated the system message now let's what let's see what happens if i give the same prompt copy this put it here and do this now you can see instead of uh, giving the textual description it's just creating a python code so it is creating an array of animals then whimsical names and then animal name pair is created using a loop it uh, randomly picks two uh, names that is one animal and one name and then creating a pair right so that means we have checked how the system message is important to define the behavior of the assistant now we'll see in code how we can try this so we have to go and clone this repository so we have already prepared this in vs code we already have this code with us no problem we can go to the application so what do you have to do in the lab files we have the third example that is prompt engineering i'll go to that this is 03 prompt engineering and we are going to do in python and inside of this we have to install the pip package so we already have the pip package installed and in the env file we have to update the endpoint and the uh, key and the model name so which is which we can copy from the previous program so this is same i'll copy this okay it's updated so the env file is updated now we can add the code to use the open ai service for that we need to open the prompt engineering.py file that is this and what we have to do we need to first import the open ai that is this imported the azure open ai class and then we need to configure this azure open ai client here we can configure this azure open ai sorry that is i think c sharp code yeah there is a python code this one this is the python code for configuring this client so we have created an azure open ai client by using the endpoint key and api version now <clears throat> what this function is doing that is this main function the main function is doing using this client i'm going to execute something so what it will do it will give one uh, men menu that is using a loop we are executing this code so it gives a menu in this menu we have the choice number one that is basic prompt that is there is no prompt engineering we are using the basic prompt example we have to execute 
that is the choice number one second is prompt with the email formatting and a basic system message third is prompt with the formatting and specifying the content and fourth example is adjusting the system message to be light and uh, use jocks and here if the choice number is one then what we have to do we are going to call a function called the call open ai model which is written below here so we are going to call this function and passing the content of a basic txt file which is there inside the prompt folder so there is a prompt folder we have four text files basic basic means there is a system and a system message prompt and uh, this is a simple uh, prompt okay and there is email format which contains the system message and the prompt which is giving a description what to do in detail third one specify the content you can see everywhere we have the same a system and a prompt but the prompt and the system messages are different so what we are supposed to do if i'm selecting the choice number one which means the basic prompt example without prompt engineering it is just to read the basic.txt content and passing as the first argument for messages. And we are also passing the model and the client. What it is supposed to do here, it will call this function, which will receive the message model and client. It opens this um, file and then reading the uh, lines. From the first line, it is splitting the role as system and uh, user uh, user message as the prompt. That is prompt as the user message. So system equal to the system message will come. That is from that line, from this first line, whatever is coming after the colon, that is this part, this is going to be treated as the system message and uh, this is going to be treated as the prompt so that is that is coming here then we are printing this message and uh, system message and user message in the screen and here we are going to make the request okay so let uh, let us go and make a request to the api and then see what is the response coming so that is the code here Here we can format and send the request to the model. Let's so here what we are doing, we make a request by specifying the system and user messages. Here we make a call to the chat completions endpoint, getting the response and printing the response. So for basic message, which it does not use the prompt engineering, what will be the result? Let's see. I am going into this. I'm going into the third example folder cd python and here i'm going to execute python prompt engineering you can see it's giving a menu so i'm selecting the first choice that is choice number one so this is the system message and this is the user message and you can see <coughs> this is the completion it's coming so write an intro for a new wildlife life rescue. So this is the intro which is created. Okay. But if I'm using the choice number two, prompt with email formatting and a basic system message. So if it is uh, email formatting to be used, okay, means the format should be an email 
then message will be basic system message okay in that case so this is the email formatting and basic system message okay this is the prompt write a promotional email for a new wildlife rescue including the following that means we have to write a promotional mail for this rescue name is Contaso. It specializes in elephants. Call for donations to be given at our website. That is a prompt. Now, if I'm giving the choice number two, there in the prompt, we have clearly mentioned what? Write a promotional email. So it uh, writes the or it returns the content in the email format. As you can see, subject equal to the subject. Dear recipient name and this is the email format or email content. At the bottom, you can see warm regards, name, position, Contoso Wildlife Rescue, Contoso Source Q.org. Some means you can see this is the email format has come. But if I go with the example three, that means prompt with the formatting and specifying the content. Which means here we are saying you are an AI assistant helping to write mails. Here we are clearly setting the behavior of the assistant that you are assistant for helping write emails. And in the prompt, we are saying write a promotional email for the wildlife rescue for the following prompt, and the content is same. And additionally, what is given? include a list of current animals we have at our rescue after signature so after the signature we have to include the list of animals we have in the form of table so we have given some additional instructions okay these animals include elephants zebras and uh, gorillas lizard and jack rabbits so, so something like that if i'm giving the choice number three it's going to write the email with an additional table at the end. Can you see here? It's creating a table. Okay. This is the writing the email which contains the table. And below, it's giving a note that don't forget to visit our website. And make the to learn about the mission, the animal we rescue, and how we can make a difference. The prompt, so the fourth example for prompt engineering is adjusting the system message to light and use jocks. That means currently this is a professional mail which it does not contain any jocks or anything. But now what we are doing inside the system message, we are going to say that include some jocks. OK, so let's see what is that. <clears throat> In the system message, we are saying you are an AI assistant that helps writing promotional emails to generate the interest of new business. Your tone is light, chit chat oriented, and you always include at least two jocks. That means in our response, it has to include some jokes. OK, so pro I think the prompt user message is always same. Now let's see what happens if I select four. See, it is creating the same. That means you can see it is writing the subject. This is some uh, what not the professional mail format, but yes, hey, uh, their animal lover, and then it's writing some content, and you can see it includes some smileys and all because it's it said don't go for professional, it's light and uh, jokes will be included. So it's writing like a normal letter, and you can also see some jokes are added here.
so that is the prompt engineering in which we have included the description means the, the the system message we have updated we have specified the formatting like a write a promotional email and what can be the format all you have specified so first one is just a normal basic uh, content without formatting then we have converted that into email format then we have changed to system message and uh, told it to include some tables and in the fourth one we have used a system message to change the behavior or make it light and uh, uh, include jokes right so that means this way we can change the behavior and response of our model so whenever we makes a request it is going to give a response according to the prompt so writing the correct prompt is very very important so that is the end of uh, third module which is prompt engineering now coming to the fourth module in the fourth module we are going to generate code with the help of azure open ai service let's see what is there in this module in this module we are going to see how we will construct the applications or services that can generate the code so means whenever we give the prompt and how this model is going to generate the application code for that complete the code and assist in development that means how we can write the code for helping the developers to improve the productivity and how to how we can use the bug fixing capability of the code or the model see we can use natural language prompts to generate the code the benefit of using generative ai is to write the text contents right means the gpt models specifically so gpt has uh, many uh, subset or many uh, types of models inside that family so one of the model which is used for generating the code is codex even gpt 3.5 is pro, is having the features of codex previously the codex was separately developed for code generations but now even gpt 3.5 and 4 is coming with the features of codex so codex is specifically designed for code generation capability so we can use the gpt models for generating the application code what you have to do is just to specify the uh, requirement maybe in the form of comments or you can directly start writing the code it will provide some uh, suggestions or anything so mean uh in 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 the tools that we use in uh, for development like a visual studio code or visual studio or eclipse or some other tools now provides the ai assistant which i will show you the 
example but if you want you can generate the applications code just using the prompt we can also break down the complex task into small pieces means we can tell the model to uh, write the code in simple steps we can also tell the model to explain the code means we don't need to worry about how this code works it will explain you what this code is doing and how, how it works okay suppose most of the developers copy the code from internet maybe from stack overflow or some other documentation website but they can't understand how it works okay so in such cases in such cases you can use the gpt models to explain the code so that it will uh, go through the code line by line and understand what this code is doing and then tell you what are the different steps involved in this uh, code and uh, how to optimize this code means sometimes we copy the code from internet sometimes it is possible to optimize the code optimize in the sense maybe if we have written something in five lines or 10 lines of code we can reduce it to three lines so here is an example prompt they have given write a function for binary search in python okay so you can ask the model to generate code for a specific task if you remember i think i have already shown this example we can go back to this and i'm setting the default message and we can clear the chat and i can see system message as write a python function or write a function in python for binary search so we can put it here so here you can see the code code generation capability of this model okay so here it is writing the binary search code and below is the explanation of that we can use it to change the programming language and understand the unknown code this is what i have mentioned suppose if you have a function written in one language you can tell the model to convert this into a different language for example here we have the function which is generated sorry this is the function which is generated in python so I'm just copying this function and clearing the chat. Then I'll write a prompt like this convert the below code uh, to C sharp. Yeah, I, sorry, I just. convert the below code we have to go to the next line ah, sorry i'll put in notepad and type there that's better convert 
the below code. So this is the code. I'm just copying this. So here I have given an instruction that convert this below function. This is a Python code. I'm telling convert the below code to C sharp. Let's see whether it is able to do. You can see here is the C sharp code for binary search. So not only this, any function that you get from internet, you can copy it here and tell the model to convert this into some other language. Okay. It is also possible to tell the model to explain this code. Suppose if you don't know the code, you can ask the model to explain this. So we can say, Instead of converting, I can tell the model. Explain the. Below. Code. Let's see whether it will do it or not. Yes, you can see the result. This is the explanation. The provided code is a Python function for binary search algorithm. Binary search is a divide and conquer algorithm used for searching a sorted array. And here is the step by step explanation. Right. So what it is doing. So here you can see the step by step explanation of the code. So this way you can uh, use the GPT models to explain the code. So usually people copy the code from internet and they don't know how to use it or what it is doing. So you can tell the GPT model to explain this code so that you will be able to understand. Complete the partial code. We can write the prompt for completing the partial code. For example, if you have done some part of this code and you can tell the model to complete the remaining. Right? So you can say complete the following function. And below you can say calculate the average of the numbers in an array, but only if they are even means we have to find the average of the even numbers. Okay, so that is given as a comment. So if I, if I copy this and execute, you can see it's a function which is starting def means it's a Python function starting. So rest of the things it will automatically write. So let's see whether it will work or not. I'm just taking this. You can see I'm saying complete the following function and below I'm saying calculate the average of numbers in an array, but only if they are even.
yes you can see it's creating the function average even numbers of array and this is a code okay so here complete completing the partial code is also working write unit test so you can tell the model to write unit test cases for the functions that you provide for example if you give a python function or c sharp function we can tell the model to write unit test for it so for example um, above i think somewhere we have used a c sharp function yeah i think this is the one this is the c sharp function i can tell the model to write the unit test for this write unit test for the below function using just n unit let me check so this is the c sharp function and i'm telling to write a unit test for this Let's check whether it will do or not. Yes, you can see it uses n unit. For that, it uh, create a text to picture setup function, and this is a test function. Okay. So this is returns index. This is returns minus one. This is empty array and returns minus one. So like this, multiple test cases it has written. Now, if I want, I can change this to write the code in maybe X unit or MS test. You can see instead of n unit, it is now using MS test. Okay. So that means you are able to create test using different uh, frameworks. So here using n unit, it is creating the test. You can see text fixture, setup method, the test method. So test method is for test generation. But when it comes to MS test, test class, instead of text fixture, it is text test class. Instead of test, it is test method, right? So now you can see for developers, it's very, very simple to write and complete the code within a given period of time. Now, the next thing is fix the bugs in your code. Suppose if you have created a function or you copied some function from uh, internet, but you are unable to troubleshoot it. There is some error, but you are unable to troubleshoot this. What you can do is you can tell the model to troubleshoot and fix this problem. Let's try that as well. I'm using the same prompt that this function isn't working for me. Fix the bug in this code.
so here it looks like there are few errors in your function here is the corrected version so this corrected and below here are the changes so what are the changes made that is written here average was calculated as total it should be total divided by length of numbers right here so average equal to total that was that is wrong this average equal to total divided by length of numbers so it's correctly identified one problem and the second problem was the return statement had a typo it should be return average not rerun average so here a rerun is there it should be return so it is not only identifying the logical mistake even syntactical mistakes it identifies you can see rerun it's just a return it's a typo which means it's a syntactical mistake not a logical mistake but if you see calculating the average average equal to total is wrong it's a logically wrong it should be total divided by length of that elements so it is able to fix the code improve the performance of the code usually uh, it means if you are a newcomer or if you are new to coding whenever we write to uh, whenever we ask you to write a code you will be implementing this code taking lot of time and writing lots of lines so sometimes the code can be completed in just one line or two line but instead of that you will be using it or you will be using 5 to 10 lines of code so that we can simplify by optimizing this code so we can tell the ai model to optimize this code so that it will uh, simplify the code instead of writing multiple lines for it here is an example okay now there is a lab associated with that but before going into lab one in interesting thing which i want to tell to you is if you are a developer you can use some of the ai enabled assistance for writing the code for you or for helping to write code for you something like a github copilot github copilot is from microsoft for code generation code fixing and other features what we have discussed but github copilot is not free it is available for free for one month and later you have to pay for it it's a subscription based but there are some free tools also available i am using the aws code whisperer with the help of code q which is completely free to so understand the code whisperer from aws is free the only condition is you have to register the code whisperer with your uh, website means you whenever you install and configure you have to create an account and register your name another one is codium so codium is another one codium ai it is available as an extension in 
Visual Studio Code. So here, if you go and search for You can see this one. This is an agent using that uses GPT 3.5 and 4 for code generations. It's not only doing code generation, but many other things which I'll show you. You can even use code whisperer. Yeah, here only. See, this is AWS toolkit that contains Amazon Q, Code Whisperer, and more. So this is providing some AI assisted code generation and other things. Can you see? Refactoring the code, debugging and fixing the code, write unit test for you, explain what a line of code or code function does explain uh, sorry answer questions and about general programming concepts so this is an ai powered productivity tool so what you can do is just go and uh, write a simple function uh, sorry uh, file Suppose app.js. So first I'm writing the JavaScript file. Create a function to uh, add a new record to a set. See? It's a very simple JavaScript function created. Okay. You can also say See here is the unit test. Describe and it. Okay, so this is a very simple unit test function for this. So I don't need to write the code for this. I in the comment I can just mention what to do and it will do for me. Suppose if it is Python code, that also you can do. Suppose app dot py. Create a function to return even numbers from an array. See, this is writing the complete function. including the documentation can you see function documentation is there this will i don't know for python what type it will use So here this is for testing the even numbers this is the array and this is the expected result and we are calling this and comparing with the expected value so we are using the assert for it right so this is the unit testing 
code for it. But we can do this in a different way. I have installed a two agents or two uh, services for it. One is Codium and another one is Code Whisperer. What I can do, I can select this function. You can see this is the function. Right click and you will see the option for Codium for generating the test. Explain this code. Uh, write a doc string in, for this code. Enhance this code and the code suggestions. Even Amazon Q also we have the same options explain refactor fix optimize and send it to prompt okay so that means these two tools providing similar features because if i'm telling explain this code the left side the code which i have selected is now explained here or if i want i can use codium for explaining this see this is codium for explaining this code. See? So that means we can use this kind of productivity tools to build applications very quickly. You don't need to go to GitHub and search for things. So you can simply use the uh, Amazon Q or Codium kind of things that will uh, do things for you. Here you can write your question. So this will do it for you. So. So I can chat with this. See, this is my prompt. And I have, I'm chatting with the Codium agent. And it is giving me the answer for code numbers finding function. Okay, so this way we can use this code generation tools. All these are using the GPT 3.5 or 4 kind of uh code generation tools and these are specifically designed for code generations and uh, code optimizations now if you go to the lab which is code generation so the instructions is the code generation this is the lab which we are supposed to execute because for every module there is a lab so as the other labs here also we have to create the resource and deploy the model which we can ignore and we can generate the code in playground so we have already done it many times so i don't want to repeat this so how we can write the code and how we can uh, uh, tell the model to explain this code so here is for explaining this code and using Visual Studio Code, we can go to the uh, application and tell the same. Okay. So we can go to the code and tell the model to uh, write the code for us or explain the code for us or refactor the code for us. So if I go to code generations example, First, we have to update the env file. Like the other eight demos, we can copy the same. Updated. And then we have to import the open AI package. Here we are importing 
right this is the lab 4 then we have to configure the open ai client here so we have to create this The same thing we are repeating in every demo, right? That's why I'm not explaining this again and again. So this is to create an open AI client. Okay. And we can use this code to get the response. So here you can see we have a loop that generates a menu. The first menu is add comments to the function. So we have a Python function in the sample codes folder. See here is the sample code and here is the function. And inside the Python function.py, there is no comments, right? So what we can do, we can tell the model to add the comments to the function. So it opens this code file read and then update the comments for it second example is to write unit test for my function so that means for the same function it's going to write a unit test third one is fix my go fish game so there is a simple go application code or go sorry go fish dot py so this is the i don't know what is this function is doing but anyway this is the python code for a go fish game and if you want uh, to fix the problems or fix the errors in this code you can tell the model to do that we can run this let me clear this See, the first option is add comments to my function. Let me see whether it is doing or not. What is that? Okay, something more to be fixed. Uh, that is not done. Okay, this response section is not added. in this below function we have to complete okay so this uh, call open ai model function we are using to pass the message and it is going to return the response and printing the response here so i missed to copy that code now let me rerun this give the choice number one here you can see the result is written into app.txt file so there is a result folder created inside this result folder That is app.txt. If you see, you can see this is Python code that now updated with the command. So for each and every line, it is writing the command. So you can see it's updated and returned the result. Now look at the choice number two, which is write unit test for the function. So now you can see it is written the unit test. So this 
is the unit test. First, we are calling this with a value. This is another one, right? So this is the unit test, which is simply use the assert function to do the unit testing. Now the third option Now the third option is to fix the go fish game. To fix the go fish game. So let's go to three. And inside of the app.txt, it has a return. So this is the fixed code. So you can see we have used the GPT for code generation, for fixing the code, for adding the comments to the code and everything. So the same logic they have used in the tools like which I have showed you how how the Codium or Code Whisperer or GitHub Copilot is uh, generating the code or commenting the code or documenting this code. So they are also using the same features, but they have created it as a product. So that's the end of fourth module. Now we have two more modules. In this fifth module, we are going to talk about the image generation. So let's go to the fifth module. This is quite interesting. This module is all about the image generation with open AI on Azure platform. In the beginning, I think in the module one, I have already explained the open AI has a model called the DAL-E, which is capable to generate the new images or edit the images or creating variations of the images there are three functionalities it offers okay means the open ai model i am saying okay so in the general open ai model that is dal e model can be used to create an image or uh, what to say uh, create variations of the image or you can edit the image. So three things you can do with the DAL-E model. But the same DAL-E model, when we use in Azure, means in Azure OpenAI, they have restricted some features. Means currently at this point of time, it is in preview. So only one feature is available. That is image generation. The image editing and creating the variations are not supported at this time okay so what we can do is you can send a prompt for generating the images okay, if you have a doubt we'll go to You can go to the open AI's documentation site. And if you go to the models, here you can see the DAL E model. So the DAL E version 3. So this is the latest DAL E model released in November 2023. Okay. And uh, you can see the features. Okay. I think the APIs you have to check. Mm. 
Okay, so here the, you can see the three endpoints of images. Can you see? You can see v1 slash images slash generations, which means it is able to generate the image. Images slash edits means for editing the image and images slash variations for image variations. So APIs, uh, let me check. Okay, API reference we can check and if I go to the images can you see here is image creation this is the open AI's endpoint not the Azure open AI endpoint so images slash generations images slash generations okay but editing image means you can use images slash edits okay you can create an edited or extended image with an original image and a prompt. Creating image variation means if you want multiple variations of that image. So here you can specify how many images you want. So n equal to two means two variations it will create. Okay. But when it comes to Azure Open AI, Dal E. You come to this. Thing dial E only. The dial E models currently in preview generate images from the uh, text prompts that is the user provides means it is only image generation feature is available there is no image editing features okay let me see here so currently the dal e is in preview and it is available only in one location that is sweden central that is dal e version 3 dal e 2 is available in east us it is not a good model because it a uh, does not generate the images so great. But if you see DAL E3, which is very, very uh, what uh, nice model, which can generate very, very interesting uh, images, which realistic images you can say. OK, so this DAL E is already used by many Microsoft uh, site or many microsoft tools like uh, in our windows we have a copilot i think this is sorry not this copilot i'm not sure whether this copilot is supporting that draw an image of ship in the sea i'm not sure whether this copilot has the feature this is Windows Copilot. Oh, so this is not ship showing. I think it. Yeah, I think it is doing spelling mistakes. It ignores. You can see it is creating that image. Yes, you can see that image. There are four variations it creates, as you can see. And below you can see it is powered by DAL E, right? So it, that means it is creating. It's not a photo, it's a generated image. Four variations you can see. So the Windows Copilot internally uses GPT and uh, DAL E. Now, if you go to the Bing GPT, suppose this is the Bing website, and here if you go to the copilot, you can see Bing.com. So there is a copilot. Here also you can tell the same. This is a browser based one. This is not Windows copilot, this is the browser based copilot. Draw an image of 
and eagle catching fish in the sea cloudy night bright mm. Let's see whether it is it will generate the image or not. This is the image description I have given. It creates the image. Okay. So it's a cloudy, scary, and storms will be there. So this is the image. And you can see there are four images it creates. That means four variations. All these are AI images, realistic images you can see, right? So that is the power of dal e which is the image generation model in uh, open ai so in this module we are going to talk about the dal e it's a very simple module see dal e is a image generation model this is using a neural network based model for generating the images that we don't need to tell because every deep learning models uses neural networks right it uses natural language to describe what image should be that means as i have mentioned in the prompt whenever you want to draw an image you have to just explain how this image looks like it will be able to create that image and it can create multiple variations of that image means up to four i think up to four you are able to specify the styling of the images okay like a cinematic light or cartoon picasso images or maybe a, uh what to say uh digital art okay so you can specify that as a style inside your prompt okay so while specifying draw image of uh, elephant and a lion running a race Realistic image so I have used a realistic image as the description means as the additional point here so my prompt actually is this one to draw the image right so that means this is a realistic image you can see different variations of that image images are created but now the same prompt i'm giving here 
with cartoon image. The style only changing. So let's see how it looks like. You can see it's very, very nice cartoon image, right? We can't expect that how good is the clarity of this image, how nicely it is drawing that, right? Okay. And we can change this with the Another style, let me try that. Okay, I think that is. Right. So this is is a different style. So you can see how creative this model is, and it is able to generate the images in different style. So this is the digital image you can see in the right side. Okay, this is actually a, I think uh, a cow image which is in digital style. We can use the DAL E uh, playground in our Azure Open AI Studio to try the things. So, anyway, for uh, trying the things, we can use even the Bing image creator also. But if you want to try with the Azure Open AI Studio, it's possible that you can go to this. And here is a DAL E playground. So, here you can give your prompt. And you can just uh, describe what you want. Okay. So here we we can see the DAL E3, and here you can specify the prompt. And in this settings, you will be able to configure the image size, image style, and image quality, like HD quality you want, vivid and natural, and the different image sizes. These are the four image sizes that support. Okay. And left side, under this content filters, content filters are also in preview only. So here you will be able to create some filtering option, like uh, whether you want to uh, allow the hate, sexual, self-harm, and violence contents. What is the severity level you have to allow or deny? Suppose currently this is in the medium. That means some kind of uh, uh, contents it will be allowed. But uh, means moderation, I'm saying. But if you make it very strict, then it will be blocking all the content suppose if you try to create the images of a person killing another person so it's not allowed right so if you draw such an image it will say that no it is not allowed to create it so simple try draw an image of a uh, of a person Killing a another 
person using knife. So what happens if you draw this? You can see it simply says your task is failed because of the safety system. That means the content which I have asked to draw is not allowed according to the moderation filters or content filters according to the moderation. This is a content which is not supposed to draw. OK, so that means. Uh, you can configure this content filter. Suppose maybe some level of contents you can allow, some level of contents you cannot allow. So there is a default filter applied. OK, uh, if you want, you can make it strict or you can make it light. It's according to your requirement, but. All comes under the. The responsible AI so because. Uh, any AI generated content can be misused, right? So that's why they are giving the content safety and content moderation features uh, in open AI. So anyway, this uh, DAL E is a. Uh, model which is used to create the images. As you can see, there is no image editing or variations creation option. If you want to invoke this feature means DAL E using the REST API, you can use the DAL E endpoint, which is images slash generations uh, using REST API. And you can specify the prompt N. N means the number of images you want and size. Size, what is the size of the image you want? So it returns a result. Here you can see it uh, returns a single URL. So instead of returning the image, it is going to return a URL and you can go and download that image using that URL. Okay. Through the C sharp or Python code also you can call the image generator of DAL E. So here you can see we create the OpenAI client and then calling the get image generations and specify the prompt and size. And then you can get the URL of the generated image. In Python also it is very, very simple. You can uh, set the open AI properties like a key and endpoint other things then open AI dot image dot create and then specify the prompt size and the number it is going to return the URL of the image which is generated. So this image you can access for a shorter period of time It's not for long time I think for 30 days or seven days there is a limit. So within that days you have to access the image. Otherwise it will be automatically deleted okay, because the images are generated inside the uh, cloud storage. So there is a uh, leave, uh, what time limit or timeout you have uh, is mentioned uh, within which you have to access and use that image. Otherwise it will be automatically deleted. So that's it in this uh, module because this module is quite simple because it's just uh, performing the image generation feature. So there is a lab associated with that. Let us see what is there in that lab, which is generate images. You can see the first uh, section or first step of this lab is always the open AI resource creation, which we don't need to do because we already have. Uh, we have this model or sorry, we have this uh, resource already available. 
now uh, understand that dal e3 is available only in the uh, sweden central location to try this we can go to dal e playground which we have already tried and you can give a prompt inside this text to generate this image means you can go to here and specify the prompt what you want to draw okay so here they have given one example something like a, an elephant on a skateboard so you can specify this so we are using the dal e3 so it's a it is going to create this image in a in different styles see it's a very nice realistic image right you can see the image which is given here is actually the one which is created using dal e2 okay but the one which we are using is dal e3 because you can see this user interface is quite quite older but this here we can select the dal e deployment which is not here we can change the style of the image like uh, an elephant on a skateboard in the style of picasso so you can specify that since it is creating the images using dal e3 version this will be more realistic and uh, better images than version 2 so this is Picasso image. You can even invoke the DAL E functionalities using REST APIs. For that, we have the sample code here that is image generation in lab 5 inside this we have the uh, generate image python code and one env file inside this env file we have to update the parameters like your open ai endpoint and the key we have to update so let me copy it from the previous example only these two is required model is not required so after updating this environment variables we can go to this and here we are going to make a rest api request as you can see we are loading the environment variables and reading those environment variables into python variables creating a prompt so for that we are asking the user to enter the prompt so input enter a prompt for generating the image and then we are preparing the url of the dal e image creation that is here at this place we'll be putting the api base url slash open api slash images slash generation so this will be the image generation api and we need to pass the authentication key so we are passing the key here content type is application slash json request body is prompt equal to what is a prompt text which is received here 
n equal to 1, which means how many images we want to generate. Size equal to what is the size of the image you want? Then request dot post means we are making an HTTP request and we'll get the submission result. So here we will look for the status. If the status is succeeded, means if the operation is completed, then we are going to read the result that is here response.json result of data of zero slash uh, zero of URL means the first image URL which is returned. Suppose if you have mentioned multiple images means the number of images as two or three it will return multiple variations of that image but here we are trying to print only the first url and here we are printing the url of the image let's run this So here is the generate image option. So we can specify the prompt because what is the image you want? You can specify that as a prompt text. Suppose I can say draw image of kids playing in a park. Yeah, there is some error. I think there is some problem in this code. This is an old code. I think you don't need to use this. The submission is supposed to return the result directly. Mm. This checking is not required, I think. I'm not wrong. This is the yeah, result also. Task not found. In that lab, there is something wrong, which Which there is something, some some bug in this code, but I think it is older code. I think I have created it. This is using SDK.
for not four is coming. I think I have given the endpoint of East US location. No, in open AI only. Let's check the documentation. Azure Open AI Dal E with West. This code is available. Prompt. Okay, I think it should work now. Just data is returned. Okay, deployment not found is coming. But it should give. This is, this is created in Sweden Central. And I have DAL is deployed. Oh, sorry, here the deployment name is not mentioned.
so the deployment name is this one which we have to read and pass And this deployment name can specify here. Now let's try. Okay, I think it is supposed to run okay it's created and you can see the url here let me click on this Yes, this is the image created. Okay. Uh, I think this lab has some problem because this lab, the code which is generated or the code which is inside this lab file is older format and it's uh, for, I think it is for uh, DAL E2 and this is for DAL E3. Okay. So since it, we are calling the DAL E3, it has to be in this format. Okay. So we are using the API format like this, API base slash open AI slash deployment slash name of the deployment, which is this one. What is a DAL E is the name of the deployment slash images slash generations. So this is the URL format. And then we are passing the prompt here. Prompt size, number, then quality and style we can pass. And when we make a post request, it returns the submission and it's going to give the complete JSON data here. And here uh, we can extract the URL. Okay, we are extracting the URL, and this is the URL which is generated. So if I say three variations, n is equal to three, and let me check whether it is able to generate different variations. Okay, sorry. Then we have to use this because it print only one image here. Invalid payload, the value property for n is invalid i think there is a limit at this time for generating okay, let it be one So because it's currently in preview, there are a lot of limitations applied on this. Okay, understand the DAL E is currently in preview. So you cannot use it in the production. You can see this is an image which is generated. Okay. This is the previous image. And this is a new image which is generated. Anyway, so 
that's it. Uh, in this module here, uh, since we have deployed the DAL E version 3, we have to use this code. If you are using DAL E2, then the old code will work. But if you are using DAL E3, then you have to update the code to this. Okay. So you can you can see this in the Microsoft documentation site, the updated code. Uh, I'll share the link here in the chat. So now we have one final module which is remaining that is about how to use custom data for generating the responses instead of using the pre-trained data how we can provide some data and based on that data it is supposed to generate the responses so how to do that that is what we are going to do next but before that we'll take a small break of 15 minutes and then we go for the final module okay so let's take a break for 15 minutes after that we will continue
Hello. All right, back. Let's continue the session. So we are now moving to the last module of our generative AI session. We have discussed so far about different uh, models available in Azure OpenAI, how to do the deployment of models, how to consume them, how we can use the models for natural language processing, how to use uh, code generations, how to uh, generate the images, and also we have discussed what is prompt engineering and what are the different techniques we can use for prompt engineering. The next and final module for this session is using custom data. So before getting into this module, you need to understand the relevance of this module. This module is all about using your own data with OpenAI service models. So what it means, understand that the OpenAI models are pre-trained models. If I'm not wrong, these models, means the GPT models are trained with a large set of data. This uh, models are trained with the data till 2023 March, I think March 2023. So these models are trained with the data available on internet till March 2023. If you see the it means different models will have different uh, uh, data uh, used. So for DAL E, they have used uh, the, uh, uh, thousands of images available on internet. For GPT, they have used uh, different uh, text data for training purposes. So now, if you ask the model, to generate something, it is going to use those pre-trained data patterns for generating the new content. For example, if you ask the model to create a blog, or you are asking the model to write a poem, or you ask the model to do summarization of text, it's going to use those pre-trained data to generate such informations or simply i have shown in the uh, morning session when you ask the model to create questions on a particular topic you can see it is uh, generating the questions on various topics within that subject or within that uh, uh, context and it is covering almost every area right so these questions generated from the pre-trained data and these models works perfectly for generating new data but the problem is when we use this models in an industry for a particular domain, how to use the data which is generated by these models for presenting responses to the customer. The problem is, for example, this model is trained with hundreds or thousands of product manuals 
for example, you know, whenever you buy a, an electronic device, it could be t television or it could be uh, a refrigerator or it could be washing machine or anything. So whenever you purchase a device, an electronic device, you will get a product manual. So what is this manual contains? How to operate that particular device? And every device will have a different product manuals because different products will have different specification, different uh, components inside it, different uh, buttons and different features. So we cannot use a common product manual for every device, right? Our uh, GPT models also trained with such product manuals but not for a single product, but thousands of products manuals are used to train the data. So if you go and ask how to switch on a TV, it can tell you, OK, take a remote and click on this, uh, press on this power button. Simple answer. It's a general answer because any television you take, how to switch on this, just use the power button of your remote but assume that if i have a smart tv which has a smart remote in which we have some buttons for example there is a wi-fi button if i if i'm not aware what is the use of that wi-fi button and i'm asking the gpt what is the use of the wi-fi button in this tv model and what will be the answer GPT may not be aware that there is a model, such model available, and there is a Wi-Fi button available in the remote, right? So that means GPT is aware about the common features and functionalities about televisions, refrigerators, and other products. But if you go into a specific product and ask, okay, how to use the Wi-Fi button of the XYZ product, it cannot answer. Then what is the use of this generative AI models if it cannot answer the question provided by the user? It's not the mistake of, or it's not the limitation of open, <coughs> open AI models. It is because we are using, or we are trying to use this general models in a specific domain. For example, a company like a Samsung or a LG or any uh, TV manufacturing company, they have different, different uh, television models, but all these models, features and functionalities uh, and the product manuals of those products are not trained in GPT or it is not used inside the GPT for training. So it cannot go and answer for that. But what if the organization or what if Samsung or, or LG, they want to create a website which provides a virtual assistant so that if the customers have a doubt how to uh, operate a particular product. So currently what they do, if the customer has some problem in how to operate a device, they will call the customer care number and there will be a human assistant who will attend the call and help them. Okay, But that person who is attending the call, he is also referring the product manual. right? So he is also reading the product manual and answering, okay, you take the remote and press this button, change the settings to this. Because he is, he is also not aware about all 100 models or all 100 uh, product types the company is producing. So he is also using the product manual only to refer and give the answer. Okay, so that I want to automate, which means I don't want a customer care agent to attend the call and give the solution. So I want an artificial intelligence model or artificial intelligence 
uh, chatbot needs to provide answer for it. Means if the customer wants to know how to use a particular button in, a, in the remote, he can go to the website, open the Samsung website. It will open the chat window and he can type the question. So I saw a Wi-Fi button in the remote. What is the use of it or how to operate this? Now, this assistant or virtual assistant needs to provide the answer. What is the use of that Wi-Fi button and how to use it? But if I'm using GPT model, the, the, the models which we have currently available, if I'm using it, it cannot answer that because it don't know what is the use of that Wi-Fi button for that product. Right. For another example, I can say. Suppose there is a hospital. Hospital is providing different types of treatments. For. Uh, neurons means uh, neural treatments or uh, ortho treatments or dental treatments or different uh, treatments they offer. There are different charges for consultation. What are the different uh, doctors available for it? Their timing, all this. Usually what the, the patient will do, they will make a call to hospital and ask the person who is sitting in the reception. So is the doctor available this day? Or which of which of the doctors available for ortho? And uh, whether the doctor is available on this particular day or when the doctor is available, then they book the appointment for that doctor. Right. But this this again a manual process because in that hospital there are maybe hundreds of doctors will be there. The receptionist needs to attend the call and answer that okay. These many doctors are available. You can come on this day, this time and all. So that means the appointment, scheduling the appointment and giving the information about the treatments. What are the treatments available in that hospital? Which of the doctors are uh, giving the treatment? All informations the receptionist has to provide on call. But instead of that, the hospital can automate this. How? When the customer wants to or customer means the patient wants to book an appointment, they can go to the hospital's website. So automatically the chat window will open, the chatbot will come and he can ask what are the types of treatments available in this hospital? So suddenly the chatbot needs to, to say, OK, the hospital is providing these many treatments. Then you can ask which of the doctors are available for ortho. Then it will give the list of doctors available for ortho. And then you can ask, OK, uh, book an appointment for this. Right. So that means in that hospital, what are the treatments available and which of the doctors are attending that? That information GPT don't know, right? The normal GPT model don't not aware about this because there are hundreds of hospitals or thousands of hospitals, and each hospital we have a different uh, types of uh, treatment mechanism. Uh, the treatments available, departments will be there, and different doctors will be available. But if an if a hospital wants to implement a chatbot, which can tell about the doctors' treatments and other informations, how to do that? Because GPT model is able to give the answers, but it is a it is based on the pre-trained data. And these GPT models are not trained with the, an XYZ hospital's information. So such cases, we go for custom data with GPT models, which means we can use the organization's data or custom data it may be a pdf which contains the list of treatments uh, list of hospitals sorry a list of uh, doctors 
uh, and uh, the other informations. Okay. We can use this PDF as a grounding content and provide the answers or generate the answers based on that PDF data. For example, I can use GPT model in, in my chatbot and this GPT model is going to read the contents from the PDF and giving the answer that, okay, this hospital is providing this, this treatments and these many doctors are available for this particular department. Okay, such information if you want to provide based on the custom data, the model has to be uh, updated with the custom data, right? So how we can use custom data to provide or to generate informations with op uh, OpenAI GPT. That is what we are going to see here because so far we have seen what GPT can do and we have understood that all the data is generated based on the pre-trained data. But now I cannot go with pre-trained data because in my hospital or in my organization, I have my own data. The GPT wants to generate or I want the GPT to generate the information based on the data I have. So how to do that? That is what we are going to see here. So how we can use custom data with Azure Open AI? For that, first we have to set up the data source, which means from where the data is coming. Because I know that I have a lot of PDF files which contains the informations about treatments and departments and uh, doctors of that particular hospital. But how GPT is able to read from that PDF? It cannot go to the PDF and read the informations directly. So I have to use some kind of data mining solution to read that PDF content and provide as a backend data or provide as a grounding content to the GPT models. So for that, we use a service called Azure AI Search. So Azure AI Search is a data mining solution or data mining service that can extract the information from PDF files or some other data sources like a, uh, Cosmos DB or maybe some other database. So somewhere, some other data source, it will read the data contents and create an index. What is the benefit of indexing? I think all of you are aware, right? So it will fast the search query process, right? So it will be able to generate uh, the results very quickly if there is an index available. So what the search is going to do, it will read the PDF contents and create an index out of it and use that index as a reference document or reference for your GPT model. So now whenever we make a request to the GPT, instead of using the pre-trained data, it goes to the search index and then find out the relevant information and generate the contents based on that data. That means we are not telling the model to go to the pre-trained data and generate the result. We are telling the model to go to the custom data generated by Azure AI search and use it. But understand, not only Azure AI search, there are many other services we can use for providing the backend data source. But in our demo, we are going to use Azure AI search. It is possible to use Cosmos DB database 
and use a vector database like a Mongo and directly provide the uh, index using this vector database. Means you can use this vector database as an index. For that, we have to use the embeddings model for generating the vector and providing the data for your GPT models. Or you can use Azure AI search to create the index. So somehow we have to create the vector index. But who create the vector index? How to create the vector index is the uh, difference. So in this demo, we are using Azure AI search for creating the vector index. And that index is used for providing the backend data for our models. In the Azure Open AI Studio, we can use the custom data section for configuring the custom data source for our GPT models. So here is the example, or here is the UI. If you see, when you go to the chat playground, so this is a chat playground. Here is one section called add your data. That is custom data. This is currently in preview, but we can try this option. And here is a button called the add data source. So you can use this button to select the data source. So it will provide multiple options, but we are going to use the Azure AI search for creating the indexes from the uploaded PDF file. So we will upload our PDF files or some other documents into uh, uh, a blob storage and then read the information from that PDF using the AI search, create the index, and use that index as the grounding content. So we have to use some extra parameters when using this custom data source for making the queries. So usually when we make a query to uh, the GPT models, we simply use chat slash completions endpoint. But when we use custom data sources, we have to make the request by using an additional parameter that is extensions slash chat slash completions. And in the request body, we have to explicitly specify one extra parameter called a data sources which means what is a data source that we can use for uh, custom data that means the type is provided as azure cognitive search which means the azure cognitive search is used as the data source which read the data and create the index out of it so you need to specify the azure ai search informations here ai search endpoint AI search key and the index name that can be used. So we'll see that how we can do how we can do a call using the C sharp. So in C sharp, what you need to do is we have to create a Azure cognitive search chat extension configuration. And here you need to specify the search endpoint and the index name. And also you need to specify the search key for authentication. And while making the chat completion request, you can see we are providing the prompt here, max tokens, temperature, uh, deployment name. And additionally, this parameter need to be provided. That is Azure extensions options equal to new Azure chat extensions options, extensions equal to your custom data configuration. That is the AI, uh, sorry, yeah, AI search service name, index, and the key. From Python, if you are making a call, you can see you, typically we use this to call, like client.chat.completions.create, and we 
specify the model name, temperature, tokens, and the messages. But additionally, we have to pass extra body equal to the configuration for the search service. Here you can see we have this search service configuration which contains the type as cognitive search parameters for endpoint key and the index name. Right. So this is quite simple, but we'll see how we can do that. So in this lab, the lab which we are going to do will help you to understand how this can be done. Before this, you have to use any of this location for uh, using custom data. So in our case, we have the open AI service ready in Sweden Central. Right, so Sweden Central, which is support the custom data source. So what we have to do, we have to go to the chat playground and we can just clear out everything. Okay. So now here you see the option for adding your own data that is currently in preview. Hope you can see, right? So under this section, we have to configure our data source. So what are the steps to follow? We'll see it here. So first of all, we have to do a deployment of model, which is already done because we, <clears throat> we have already some deployments done. These are the different uh, models we have deployed. So that is done. Now, observe the normal chat behavior without adding the without adding your own data so here i'll explain you what is the uh, use case here there is a travel agency its name is margis travel agency the travel agency operates in different countries they are providing tourist destinations uh, uh, for the customers that like a Dubai, New York, California, and many other locations, Sydney and all. Okay. So if a customer wants to know which of the hotels are provided by uh, Margis Travel in Dubai, suppose if he wants to go to Dubai and he wants to stay in a particular hotel. So if the tour is arranged by Margis Travel, they had a tie up with some hotels and they can provide the rooms in a discounted rate. So we need to know which of the hotels are provided by Margis Travel. Or if I go to New York, there are hundreds of hotels you can see in New York, but there are some hotels only uh, providing support or providing uh, what uh, hospitality for the Margis Travel customers. So. We want to know which of the hotels are supported or provided by Margis Travel in a particular city. So currently, I don't have any uh, custom data configured for Margis Travel. So I'll just go and uh, ask a question. So this is the question I'm asking to chat GPT. See, I would like to take a trip to New York. Where should I stay? That means I want to go to New York where I can stay. Now, if I ask this question to GPT, it will be giving an answer saying that there are many places. Uh, these are the hotels like uh, Midtown Manhattan. Okay, let me use a 16K model because that is much faster. Okay, I'll just clear out. See, this is much faster, right? So if you see the uh, New York City offers a wide range of accommodation options uh, like a Midtown Manhattan, 
lower manhattan uh, chelsea williamsburg okay long island and there are many many hotels available okay so you can see it is just a saying that there are many hotels available you can choose any of this one because these informations are already trained in the gpt because gpt know in new york what are the hotels available so it just give the list of hotels okay randomly it just selected some list of hotels but i am not expecting this i am expecting the hotels which is offered by margis travel but that gpt don't know which of the hotels are offered by margis travel right so we can ask we can ask some other question like a uh, what are some facts about new york let us just give a general new york city information like uh, here are some interesting facts about new york and you can see this is something about the new york but there is nothing to be related to margis travel as you can see it's just a general information about new york city right but this is not the expected one we are expecting the model has to return the list of hotels offered by margis travel in new york so for that what we can do will go to the add your data preview section and here we can click on add a data source let me clear out this first here we can choose from where the data has to come we we have different options directly we can use azure ai search if the ai search is already ready with the index means understand if the ai search service is already configured with the index then we can go for this option or we can go with blob storage or we can go with cosmos db for mongo db v core or from a direct website url you can specify or we can upload the pdf files or some other documents from there it can read the informations so in our case if you look our lab is providing some document here we have the data section inside this data we have some pdf files i hope you can see it so these are the different pdf files like uh, information about dubai las vegas london margis travel company information new york brochure san francisco so if you open this so if you open this new york brochure you can see it's a pdf so this pdf now contains the hotels offered by uh margis travel only three hotels you can see manhattan grand central and park hotel and here is some information about new york city right and this is which file new york brochure dot pdf suppose if i want to know about the uh, dubai so in dubai here you can see information about dubai and these are the hotels provided by margis travel at dubai free hotel dera hotel lost city hotel so these are the different hotel like this there are some hotels informations we have in pdf so what we can do will go to the option upload files option because i want to upload the files to a cloud storage and from that uploaded pdf i want to extract the information so i select the upload files option and now the thing what i need to do is i have to upload the files to a storage account then use an ai search service so there are two services required now one is a blob service for uploading the files second is a search service for creating the index so from 
the blob storage i already have two storage accounts i can use any one of this or if you want you can create a new storage account it's fine okay but i don't i don't want to create a new one because i already have storage accounts so i'm just selecting a storage account if the cross origin resource sharing is not enabled it will ask you to enable it here with a button so you can do that since i have already enabled it's not giving any force policy error now the important thing is i don't have a search service so i have to create a new ai search resource i'll click on this create new ai search so in this new tab it opens the search window or search service here i can go and create this so resource group i'll select open ai group service name means search service name i can say sin search open ai i'm giving sin search open ai location i think i can use uh, sweden central because our uh, gpt is deployed in sweden right so I'm, i can use same location sweden pricing tier this is by default standard pricing tier i can go with a basic pricing tier that is fine okay so this is so uh, 2 gb right okay i think let me verify the document okay basic is fine so i have selected the basic click on next nothing to configure networking nothing to configure tags nothing to configure review and create Done. so it's now creating a search service Okay, you can see the search service is created. Now, I can go back to the chat playground here and you can click on this refresh button. And now you can see the search services listing here. So I'm selecting that. And now it is looking for the index. So if there is no index available, we can create a new index. For example, I can say Margis hyphen index. So I'm giving the index name as Margis index. And I can specify. I acknowledge that connecting to AI search account will incur additional cost. Yes, because obviously when we use uh, AI search, additional charges will be there. Click on next. Here we have to upload the PDF into the storage account. So click on this. I can go to downloads. Okay, these are the different uh, PDF files we have. I can just upload all the PDF files and click on upload. Click on next you can see uploading is completed click on next and here we have to say we have to search based on the keywords provided okay and chunk size means if it is very large pdf documents it is better to divide them into small chunks usually 1024 will be the chunk size so chunking is the process of breaking down your documents into smaller segments for search and retrieval. Chunk size is measured in tokens. If the selected chunk size results a low accuracy, re-ingest your data with a different size. Means 
this is default. So let go with this one. We can click on next and save and close. Then you can see here data ingestion is happening. It is I sure AI search is reading the data from PDF and creating the index. You can see. You can see the indexing is in progress. OK, so. Document pre-processing completed and it's now creating the index. Since these are small documents, it will complete very quickly. Yes, it is done. Now you can click on this advance the settings and see here. There is a checkbox which says limit the response to your data content, which means. It is going to provide the responses only from this custom data, not from the pre trained data. OK, so that is what let it be. Now I'm going to ask the same questions which which I have asked previously, so I can go back. And ask this question. I would like to take a trip to New York. Where should I stay? Here, if I ask this question, now whether this will give a general answer or it will give the information from the Margis documents. Yes, you can see here it says you have several options for accommodation in New York. Here are some hotels offered by Margis Travel. See now. Now it is giving only the hotels offered by Margis Travel, and these are the hotels, right? Manhattan, Grand Central, and the Park Hotel. And this content, sorry, this content is generated from a document, and that document information is coming as a reference. Here you can see New York brochure.pdf is used as the ground content because the document. Sorry, the data is generated based on the data from this document. Suppose if I go and ask something about the New York City. You can see this information is coming from the uh, document Margis travel document. OK. And here. We can ask the next question. I'm just asking about Dubai. Where I. Or which of the. Hotels are offered. Or uh, hotels are available in Dubai. 
So now you can see what is the answer. So Margis Travel offers following accommodations in Dubai. That is Creek Hotel, Dera Hotel and the Lost City Hotel, right? So that means this is coming from which document? Dubai, Dubai brochure dot PDF. So that means, so why? what is this part one? Because it, there is only one chunk, okay? So because the document was very small, there is only one chunk. Okay, so that's why the part one. If, if Suppose if the document was big and it will be divided into multiple chunks and then it will show part one and part two is coming from another document or maybe same document, like how many parts are there and that chunks information will come here. Part one means there is only one chunk. Okay. So now you can see this model is now giving answers about the Margis travel only. It's not giving general answers, right? So this is how we train the model or we uh, use the model to generate the answers based on custom data, right? So interesting. So now you can go and build the open AI solutions which generate the uh, which generate the uh, uh, responses based on some custom data that you provide. Okay, so the custom data can come from the PDF documents or maybe from databases or some other places. So as I have mentioned earlier, suppose now if you want to give the uh, products manual as a data source, you can do that. So that now if you ask a question, like what is the use of that Wi-Fi button in the remote of the XYZ model? So now it will go to the index and check which product model is, is asked. And inside that document, what is the use of the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi button, right? So that is what uh, the, the benefit of using custom data or adding our own data as a grounding content for GPT models. Hope that helps you to understand the power of OpenAI, especially in Azure OpenAI and how simply we can configure the model to use the custom data as the grounding content. And this is the end of our session also. So we have done with all the six modules we have completed the labs as well now if you have any questions you can post the questions on the chat or else we can wind up so we have done with all so rg are you want to Announce something. Uh, hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining this session. Thank you, Sonu, sir, and thank you, all the participants. I'm sharing the feedback form and uh, kindly request you to fill the feedback form, and you will get the recording once it is uploaded on the YouTube channel. And we will share the recording session and all the required detail uh, through thank you mail. And I'm sharing the uh, concerned person contact number. If you have any queries, uh, you can contact uh, the given number. Thank you. So now if you have any queries, you can put the questions. <laughs>